Okay, so we yanked this old stator out of the Honda CX-500. We have a new stator inside the engine now and the engine back in the bike, uh, but we gotta get the wiring connected to the rest of the motorcycle. We're gonna do that right now. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so a bunch of wires coming out of that new stator that we got from RM Stator. This video is going to serve as uh, number three in a series on how to replace the stator. So, you know, I mean, engine out, engine in, um, engine cover apart, all of that is part of doing the stator, obviously, and that's all here on my channel under the uh, CX-500 playlist, but if you're just looking at the stator itself as an individual part and how to take the old one out and put a new one in, um, that's really three videos with this being the final one. I will put the other two down below in the comments. I'll, I'll have links to that. Sorry, in the description, not in the comments. And, uh, and maybe I can pop up some links uh, on this video while I'm talking here that will also uh, lead you there. But let's look at this mess. What do we have coming out of here? Let's, let's revisit what's here. Okay, so I've got my old stator here and I have all of the wiring coming out of the new one. Never mind this, it's just a clamp. We'll deal with that later. And all of this hooks up right here in these three clamps. So, what came out of the old stator? We had three yellow wires and a blue, a green, and a white. Now, the, um, the blue, the green, and the white, these guys serve as power to our CDI, and the three yellows were just the... Um, the three phases of AC power coming off of the stator windings. You have a three-phase winding and so pretty much all motorcycle uh, charging systems, alternator, uh, stator, whatever you want to call it, generate alternating current in three phases. And so you'll always have three, uh, sorry, shouldn't use words like always, um, you will often have three wires coming off of there and so Honda made them yellow. On the new stator, RM stator has made those black but they're right here and then they have conveniently made the other three the exact same colors as they were on the original stator. Great! Then what else is coming off of here? These are the original wires for other functions, um, the CDI pickups that are down inside there, and essentially all of this is for the ignition system. So original wires, original uh, pin connectors on here, we'll put this all back where it originally was. So that's really all we have to work with on our new stator. It's pretty simple. And then uh, if RM Stator didn't treat us well enough already there, here's the original uh, plug connector caps, I guess I'll call them. These are really female plugs. Well, they're male because this comes into it, but depends on how you want to look at it. Anyways, RM Stator is really awesome and has included brand new ones that are exactly like the old ones that came out. So this will be truly uh, almost nearly a plug-and-play solution. Now I would be remiss if I didn't mention this wire also. This is the, uh, it's green with a red stripe and it comes from uh, down below where the neutral switch is for the indicator light up on the gauge to tell you that your transmission is in neutral and that used to come up here and then join into the wiring harness along with the stator wires for just a short little jaunt where it then plugged into 
right up here, up by the uh, top of the air box. This is the green with red stripe female. So all of those stator wires are supposed to route up here, you know, on the inside of the carburetor. And then along this rail, they were held on with these straps. Whereas this neutral switch wire was run internally here, broke off this way, and plugged in up top. With this switch uh, wire, you know, one, it was getting really tight inside of this uh, protective shroud or insulating shroud when I was putting all of these wires through there. And two, it isn't entirely necessary that it run inside of this thing, but we do have to protect this wire somehow. Uh, I'm just going to put some heat shrink on this section and protect the wire and then just put a couple of small zip ties along so it follows the same path, but I don't see why that has to be internal to this harness, essentially. So we'll sneak this through a bit of heat shrink tubing or fish it through would be a better term. So there I've got you know that exposed part of the wire all covered up and we'll shrink it. and protected so then that wire just comes up here kind of loops around and I'm just gonna zip tie those together just to kind of keep the route similar and you know, maybe three of them. And then up here is where it breaks off and heads back this way, so that'll be my final zip tie will be just right there. Great. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship and how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on urbanmonktv.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. And plug it in. I'm going to run it through here just to keep it out of the way of the air box so that when a future owner replaces, again, this is it. Check your wire color here and here. They should match. I'm going to clean this up. little electronic cleaner. That's some on my rag here. there. Good connection. I may go through all of these and just clean them up with that cleaner. And same thing here. These are all original and uh, they've had plugs plugged into them the entire life of this bike so they shouldn't be too corroded inside. But I'm not replacing this end of things so I might as well just Spray a little in there. Better than nothing. And then with the kit, I have brand new ones 
for the stator wires, but these pins are all original. And so I'm going to clean those uh, with a little rag and some electric cleaner. So beginning with these uh, ignition control wires, you know, two ways you can go about this. You can look at orange-red, orange, orange-white, and then look on the other side of this plug and find the corresponding. Um, but things get really dirty over 40 years, and it gets it's real tight the way this is wound. The other thing you can do is go back to that journal that you keep in your garage where you wrote down all of this in the correct position with uh, the colors and pin position, all of that. Um, that's, that's what I did, and I did it before I took it all apart. This one's the easy one uh, because they're all the same color, and it doesn't matter what order they go in. This is the stator the three phases of the stator, so we're saving that for last here. This one's also very easy. It is white and blue, and I don't even really need my um, diagram in my journal for that. And this guy is the one that I really am going to benefit by having that uh, written in my journal. Now, before we get too excited here, we have uh, still a bunch of exposed wire and we still have some of this really nice abrasion resistant or vibration resistant uh, electrical shrouding that uh, we're going to run this through. Before we go fishing this on, let's cut it to length because otherwise you'll end up with this wad of connectors stuck in the middle somewhere and you know then you're cutting that, that's a mess. So. Maybe an inch of overlap here, and you can always cut more off later, but right up to where these end. Roughly there. Obviously starting with the longer ones first. You could probably safely cut some of this wire off now too, but I think there might be a benefit to having it as long as it is. Yeah. And then stagger these through there so you don't have one big wad of electrical pins or spade connectors in uh, one spot because you're going to end up bunching it up like this. Maybe what I'll try is running them through one at a time. Or maybe a couple at a time. Take some finesse. So here I can grab a couple on the other side and pull the slack through. But I have to just bunch this up to reach the deepest ones. There we go. There's one more in there. I'll just work one at a time. Couple more to go. This last one was tricky, but it is possible. And that is why I put that neutral switch on the outside, because it's a tight fit in here. Now, I can get some overlap. I've probably got an inch there. All my connectors are out the other side. And that looks really good. 
So the other thing we got to do is obviously the wires that are provided by RM Stator are longer than necessary and we want to get things chopped down to a length that makes sense here. So I route correctly and this is actually supposed to sneak under here so you're not going you know the seat on top of the wires. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and tie this in up here. Okay, so let's route this a little bit. We've got our three black are going to need to go down here. I'll probably cut them off a little longer than I need, but I just want to make sure I leave enough wire. I don't want to be splicing some back in. Oh, I got a better wire cutter than that. So yeah three black, cut them to length, little scraps of wire that I'll probably keep around for something you never know when you need some good automotive wire and black for a short run. I get to be a little bit of a hoarder with the oddest things but I also have things around when uh, I have a situation that they're handy. This should be 16 gauge wire. Yeah, it is. And that's a good thing. Okay. These are a crimp style connector. So with these, as we're crimping these on the wire, let's see if I can point to this. You have these two tabs. You want this crimping the wire, the bare wire, really good. And then line this up, these two, so that they pinch into the insulation. This is more of a holder and this is a connector, if, that's, if that makes sense. So I'm lining this up about here and you see I've got this back on the insulation to hold it but my wire is stripped away so much that it's interfering with the tab that holds it into the plug so I really need to uh, have stripped less wire or in this case I'll just cut this wire back a little bit. Oops. So that's a little better. And then pinch this down on the wire. And pinch it well. And then pinch this down on the insulation. That's on really good. That's as good as the factory did. You want to drop some solder in there, fine, you know, hit it from in here. But the problem is you'll heat all this up and melt the insulation back. And in a sense, this is probably better. Just make sure it's crimped tightly. And that's what we're looking for. And then again, this plug, and it doesn't matter the position. Just make sure you're lining up the little tabs. You see how they're, that's like a smiley face. Um, what a happy little dude. Anyways, line your tabs up with the little tab on the spade connector. So like that one will go in like that. And you'll hear it click. Bam. That's it. Oh, that one went in very easy. And I gotta reverse this. Is that right? Yep. There. And plug it in.
There. The new stator is officially wired in. But, of course, we've got to put the other wires back. So one thing I'm noticing here, before I put these older plugs into the new uh, plug shroud, is the little tab that holds it inside of here and keeps the wire from backing out as you plug it in uh, is flattened out and bent. And, you know, maybe that was from me handling them, uh, trying to fish them through. Who knows how that happened, but I'm going to go through here with a little screwdriver and just make sure those tabs are bent out a little bit so that they actually engage properly. Yeah, just a little bit. Then when it snaps in there, it'll hold. There, I got them all. It's essentially like the barb on a fish hook. You anglers out there will know that uh, you don't want the fish coming off the hook once it's bit on. So that's the barb that holds it in the fish's mouth. So I'm going to first put the old original connectors into here and then this one green that comes with the new stator also uh, is integrated into this plug and the remaining blue and white are on this one. So I'll do the green last but for now I'm just going to plug these in following my diagram and confirming it with the wires on the other side of the uh, the female side of this plug. That one I'm not getting a good connection with the barb, so oh, because I had it reversed, that's why. Listen for the click. There, I had that right that time. And light blue. Okay, so the green is the last one to go in here. Okay, so our green wire for the CDI, I've cut and stripped away a little bit. And I will crimp that on. Okay, he goes over there. If you want, you can grab it from the other side and pull it through until it clicks. So there we are. And you guessed it, plugs in there. Only two more to go, and pretty self-explanatory because they clearly go white to white, blue to blue. Thank you, RM Stator, for keeping all the color coding the same. And my final wires. Oop, backward. Well, that's just not grabbing very well. Let me bend that tab. The other one looks more pronounced. Okay, uh, is that correct? Yep. Blue. There, it's grabbing good. And white. Okay. Ha ha! Done. Well, there you have it, you guys. The stator's wired in, and I'm on my last sip of tea, so the project's done. Hey, thanks to RM Stator for providing a good kit and a solution for these old bikes. Um, you know, finding parts for a 40 year old anything is kind of an amazing feat. And uh, for a company to offer a solution, I just, I'm grateful, that's it. Uh, so thank you. And if you like motorcycles, check out my book, Creating Mr. Corton. It is available on urbanmonktv.com. It's a good read for people that like motorcycles. 
It's a good read for people that don't like motorcycles too, actually. I do have a few folks that have uh, read it who are not motorcycle people. Because there's a good story in there about just a young boy falling in love with something that follows him his whole life. Um, this is it. Stater's in. That's done. Next video on the CX-500 will be replacing this, you can't see it, regulator rectifier <laughs> that is bad on this bike with a new one from, you guessed it, another discontinued part from Honda, but RM Stater's got one that'll fit and uh, it's a good one. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to become an urban monk. Thanks for watching.